I set the difficulty to normal because I'm no wimp. Choose a setting for Subasa's glasses? I don't even know who that is. Does she naturally wear them? Does she not? Does this affect the story in any way? I don't know! How anime is this game going to be? Ah, oh, here we are in an opera show where everyone gets Thanos with shapes, and this little girl gets saved by some sparkly flower petals. Who knows why? Oh, I was wondering where this song came from. It's straight bussin', as the kids say nowadays. I have since added it to my Superstar Sick Mix 2000 for when I'm crushing it at the gym. But you don't go to the gym! Alright, prologue reincarnation. We text our Superstar BFF, and then we walk around and talk with the locals of the event. That's when we run into Tsubasa, the optional eyewear girl. She realizes she's late for a hair appointment or something, and we follow down the hallway where the ghost of Christmas past follows behind us. What? No way! She wasn't late for a hair appointment, she's in the audition! The creepy MC guy starts poking and prodding into Tsubasa's personal life and past, pressuring her to go into the sad, sad details of the mask's disappearance. Which turns out to be that opening scene where, you know, everyone disappeared. Oh, this guy knows. Creepy MC dude goes full Tokyo Ghoul on the place and summons his horde of Christmas ghosts in face-up attack position on the crowd, shouting he wants all the Perform Pal cards everyone's got. He opens up a portal, steals glasses, and you are saved by the Thanos shapes by believing in the heart of the cards. Into the portal we go. We are not in Kansas anymore. Humanoid Navi comes to us with info we already know and she flies off. We are then treated with an animated cutscene where the ghosts of Christmas past are trying to kill us and glasses, and we once again believe in the heart of the cards and rust sun gun that power into the ghost and into the ghost that was trying to kill glasses to reveal that they are a Ninja Gaiden and a Digimon. We perform a fusion dance because all of a sudden, we now know what to do. You know, so far so good. I'm really enjoying the story as an anime fan myself. I did like the look and feel of the game, but how's the actual gameplay mechanics? Well, I'm glad you asked. This game gives us no tutorial whatsoever, which bothered me at first, but in hindsight, I really enjoyed it because it added to the immersion of the game. He's someone who has no idea what's going on, and I'm someone who also has no idea what's going on. The turn-based combat is something I really enjoyed about the game. It's a platform that's safe and comfortable for a gamer like me who grew up on RPGs and the like. Here in combat, we have different options to choose from like basic attack, a skill, we can use items, guard, escape, and so on. The enemies have different elements or types associated with them, as do our skills and attacks. After you fight an enemy the first time, you learn what it's weak to and choose the corresponding attack element. Just like another turn-based RPG I know but I can't quite put my finger on it. During combat, you are more offensive with your abilities, and Glasses is more support. She can perform a basic attack or heal using her skills. After each battle, you gain experience points to level up in various stats and learn new abilities and strange. What's that other RPG I know that has the exact same function? Anyways, we learn we are special and have the ability to work with these things called mirages. In the overworld, you have enemy ghosts around that will come after you, and if you come in contact with them, you enter a battle. Or, in the overworld, you can swing your sword and attack them to avoid the battle altogether. About 40 minutes in, and this game is checking all the boxes for me. We meet up with the Tokyo Ghoul looking freak and he wigs out on us. Whoa! Our superstar BFF is not just a superstar, he's also about to bond with a mirage and battle with us? No way! I'm totally surprised. Surprise. In all honesty, I actually was a tad surprised and quite see that coming. I knew he'd turn up, but I wasn't sure, like, how. Tokyo Ghoul reaches his final form, smacks himself in the face with an axe, and is ready for combat. Our BFF makes a beautiful Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Bs entrance, and we begin combat. I know this is the beginning of the game, but I was a little worried about this match. I wasn't sure if we needed to grind a little before jumping in, but, you know, YOLO. It was here I really started to understand the session function of combat. A session is where you perform an attack with another ally against the enemy. I still don't quite fully understand how to trigger it properly, but this is just the first hour I'm playing the game. I imagine eventually you'll be able to set off a sick combo with everybody attacking, and it'll be straight bustin'. We demolish the freak, and apparently we are now forces of justice. I like the sound of X-Force more. X-Force! X-Force. After we leave Middle-Earth, we become recruited by Maiko to take on the forces of evil and ne'er-do-wells as a super awesome team of ragtag Mirage Masters. And that brings us to the end of the first hour of the game. 
The first chapter took me about an hour and ten minutes to complete, and I was definitely taking it slow to take in the game, the environment, and try to figure out the mechanics without a proper tutorial, which I still liked in hindsight. All in all, it's a great game for what it offers, and it definitely turned out to be much, much different than what I was expecting. A friend recommended the game to me because he thought he remembered it being a rhythm game or having rhythm-like elements, which so far it doesn't and that was a very pleasant surprise to me. I would rate the first hour of Tokyo Mirage Session 4 out of 5 arbitrary stars. And if you're into JRPGs, pick it up and take in all that sweet, sweet anime tropey goodness. Alrighty guys, see you later!